In this video, we're going to introduce the ingredients of the plasticity model in uniaxial behavior. From now on, all our work will be based on the true stress, true strain curve. Given a true stress, true strain curve, the first step is to decompose the total strain into two components, elastic strain and plastic strain. The elastic strain is always equal to the stress divided by Young's modulus. The plastic strain is the remaining component, the total strain minus the elastic strain. A new curve can then be drawn relating the yield stress with the plastic strain. This curve provides the information in the strain hardening region where the permanent plastic deformation is associated with change often increase in the yield stress. This curve is a relationship between the yield stress and the, um, and the plastic strain component obtained in the direction 1, 1 in a uniaxial uh, test. And in the future, this will be called the equivalent plastic strain. There are many mathematical models that can be used to describe the curve of the yield stress versus plastic strain or versus equivalent plastic strain. The most ubiquitously used model is the Ramberg Osgood mathematical model that assumes the curve to follow a power law in which the plastic strain is equal to a constant k multiplied by sigma 1 1 over e power n where k and n are material uh, constants similar to Young's modulus. This relationship is the same relationship between the equivalent plastic strain and the yield stress. Notice that this relationship assumes that the curve starts actually from uh, uh, the point zero zero and it follows um, a power law that uh, that touches the curve as the stress increases. As the plastic strains are isochoric, under a uniaxial behavior, the plastic strains in the other directions are equal to negative half multiplied by the plastic strain in the direction of loading. In other words, if a specimen is permanently elongated, its cross-sectional area decreases, which becomes permanently compressed, such that the total permanent volume change is equal to zero. We are now going to characterize the plasticity model using three main ingredients, yield function, hardening rule, and flow rule. The yield function is the function that decides whether the material behavior is elastic or plastic. In a uniaxial stress state, this yield function is equal to sigma 1 1 minus the yield stress as a function of the permanent plastic strain in the material. If the yield function gives a negative value, then the material behaves elastically. If the yield function gives a zero value, then the material should start to behave plastically. Let's follow this yield function on the shown stress strain curve. Before reaching the initial yield, the, the sigma on one is less than sigma yield. So it's behaving elastically. This material is follows the, following the linear portion of the curve. Now let's assume that the loading ensued into the strain hardening region and then unloading occurred. At this stage, the yield stress is equal to the value characterized by the blue circle shown here. If unloading happens, sigma on one is less than the yield stress and so loading and unloading happens elastically until sigma on one reaches the uh, value of sigma yield. At this stage, the plasticity model would kick in. The yield function also describes how plasticity evolves by following the black curve, this black curve and this black curve. By taking the derivative of the yield function with respect to a fictitious time, or basically calculating the rate of change of f, this is equal to the rate of change, or the rate of sigma on 1, minus 
the slope of sigma y with respect to its only uh, variable, its only variable, uh, the equivalent plastic strain. So the slope of d sigma, the slope d sigma y by d uh, equivalent plastic strain multiplied by the rate of the equivalent plastic strain. This equation can be uh, written in um, uh, in a different form, saying that the increment in f delta f is equal to delta sigma on 1 minus delta sigma uh, yield, uh, so which is equal to delta sigma on 1 minus the rate of change of uh, sigma yield with respect to the only variable uh, uh, that sigma i, the only variable that sigma i is function of, which is the equivalent plastic strain, multiplied by delta equivalent plastic strain. This equation is called the consistency uh, condition it's usually used to calculate the equivalent plastic strain or the increment in the equivalent plastic strain knowing an increment in the stress. The next ingredient for the plasticity model is the hardening rule. The hardening rule describes the relationship between the yield stress and the plastic strain or the equivalent plastic strain. The ramberg osgood model is one example of a hardening rule. The last ingredient is the flow rule, inspired by the observation that for mild steel, upon reaching the yield stress, the material seems to deform without any increase in the stress, the behavior termed flow as it's analogous to a fluid flowing at constant stress. The mathematical rule describing the three-dimensional plastic deformation is thus termed the flow rule. Under uniaxial stress, the flow rule states that the shear plastic strains are equal to zero, while the plastic strain delta epsilon um, uh, 2, 2 plastic and delta epsilon 3, 3 plastic are equal to negative half multiplied by delta epsilon plastic 1, 1. In the next video, we're going to look at these three ingredients, yield function, hardening rule, and flow rule in a general three-dimensional state of loading.